Hey everybody, welcome back to CN Live here on NRA TV. And sometimes it's good to be under the headsets because while we were gone for our break, Kurt uh, Schlichter and I just had a blast uh, laughing and joking and it's sunrise in America again. So let's see if we can kind of get you caught up to some of the things we uh, we were talking about on the break. Uh, Kurt, I'm going to I'm gonna set up a premise for you. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time with it, but here it goes. I think that if you look at back in the Peloponnesian Wars, the Greek Civil War, you had the Athenian culture, which was a culture of trade and music and they were poets and they were playwrights and science and they lived in a walled city and they didn't know much of what's going on. Now on the other side was Sparta, which were just a bunch of, of warriors who had slaves to, to, to um, basically tend to their fields and all they did was fight. And the Athenians and the Spartans went back and forth during this 30 year war, ended up destroying Greece. I maintain that the reason America is so exceptional and so remarkable is because we're able to be both Athenians and Spartans at the same time. We're able to do the science, we're able to do the music and the poetry and, and all of the movies and the music and all the rest. And at the same time, we're a bunch of butt kicking, hard ass sons of bees out there when things get serious. And I think for the last eight years, these Athenian type values have gotten completely out of balance and Donald Trump is bringing Spartan type values back and the Athenians don't know what to do about it. But here's my first question for you and I'll just tee you up. I noticed that Meryl Streep and the rest of these uh, progressive Hollywood uh, people are not ashamed or worried or embarrassed about telling our military how to fight a war, but I'm not aware that every single year there's a show watched by 40 million people where all of America's generals come out in tuxedos and tell Hollywood how to light a movie, and, and, Mer and Meryl Streep's makeup was a little bit heavy on the eyelash uh, liner last time, and, 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 and I don't hear them talking about, you know, the, the mood is not quite right. In other words, the Athenians can't stop telling the Spartans how to do their job, and the Spartans never tell the Athenians how to do their job. And if everybody would just kind of mind their own business, we'd be in much better shape. Well, I, I think that's a great analogy, though in the United States, the ones with the helots, the slaves, those are the mm -hmm. Athenians, and, and those are the illegal aliens. So yeah. I, with, with, with that little tweet, you're, you're absolutely right. There's a, there's a lot of arrogance that one gets from not doing any constructive manual labor from mm -hmm. not actually building something, mm -hmm. from, from living in an abstract way. I mean, if you're a construction guy, like Donald Trump is, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have a concrete result. There's a building, and it either falls over or you rent it out and make a lot of money. Right. Now, if you're a writer, 99 times out of 100, no one's ever going to read your stupid book. Uh, 99 exactly. times out of 100, no one's going to see your stupid movie. Right. And when they do, it's kind of it's kind of a lark. It's kind of random. And yes. And, and you yeah. can be wrong. If you're an actor yes. and you give a terrible performance, you're a writer and you write a terrible article in Hollywood, you'll probably get promoted. But at the very least, somebody will go, that wasn't very good. If you're an engineer and you make a mistake, people die. If you're a soldier and you make a mistake, people die. If you're a pilot yes. and you make a mistake, people die. And the people who actually have to face the consequences of reality are almost universally conservative. And I think that says an awful lot. Yeah, there's a lack of seriousness among great, many great Americans today. And it didn't always happen to be that way. And if, especially if you look back, look back 150 years ago in Britain, you had people who were uh, artists and writers and talents who would also go off and serve Her Majesty. Look at Winston That's exactly Churchill. Right. Uh, uh, he was a he was a war hero and a correspondent. He was a guy who wrote a million words, like a hundred books. It's amazing, and these are quality books we still read today. I read his prose and I shake my head in despair. Me too. But he wrote this, for a living. Mm -hmm. Yes. But he also did. He fought, uh, uh, you know, he fought the Mahdi. He, he yeah, fought Yeah, he was the in, in, the, in the Boer War. He escaped from a, from a Boer prison and he, headed out in a boxcar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He led a battalion in the trenches. This is a guy who could do both. The perfect right. synthesis. And we had many Americans like that. And I think World War II was really the last time. We had 12 million Americans under arms, approximately one in nine, one in 10 Americans. We mm -hmm. had a whole generation that came back uh, that both had that serious side. They had proven, you know, either you have rooted out the Japanese in the Pacific or you've been a paratrooper mm -hmm. in Market Garden or, you know, Kazarine Pass in North Africa. You, you've right. seen reality. You've done, uh, you've done concrete things. And then you come back and then you become a writer or a screenwriter. Right. Look, look at Ernest Borgnine. He was on Navy ships. Then he came back and then he could be in McHale's Navy, a comedian. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And 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 some cases it's not even like you went to the war, then you came back and became a star. You look at Jimmy Stewart, who's probably my yes. favorite actor of all time. He's a superb a actor, hero. really. He's at the top of his game when the world when the war breaks out. He's at the absolute top of his game. No question, you could make the case. No, we've got to keep him here. He's a, he's much more valuable to us as a as a propaganda ad set and as and as a as a you know a spokesman for America. But it's not what he did. He he signs up. I think he flew. I think he flew uh, B twenty four Liberators B24s. and he flew in combat a bunch yes, of times. Did. And and then he went back again in Korea. And he was an Air Force general. And it yes. wasn't a, it wasn't a ceremonial position. It wasn't a honorary generalship. He was a yeah, patriot. He, he loved this country. As, he, he also flew as an observer over Vietnam as a uh, two-star. There you go. So, I mean, what, what, uh, but th what, what a beautiful synthesis that says that you, you don't have to give up you know, that connection to the concrete world to be an artist as well. That's We're right. Not, no, none of us say that you have to. None of us say that you even should. But when you it's, have no balance, you're incomplete. Right. Uh, right. And, 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 and people I, like... I'm sorry. Oh, go on, go on. I was going to say, people like you who who um, who really do live in both of these circles. You, you served in the in the military overseas, and at the same time, you're a writer and successful writer. Um, people like you and have the ability to explain to the to the to the left. The American people in the middle don't need any explaining to. They know what's real and what's not. But somebody has to explain to these uh, members of the media and the celebrity hood that the world that they live in, in fact, the world that they have to live in, if they can't do their jobs, if they don't live in a kind of a Disneyland that's surrounded by a force field and that yes. force field protects them from what's going on outside that force field. And that force field is maintained by men and women in law enforcement and in the military who often give their lives so that people like Meryl Streep can be in a society comfortable enough for her to do a good job as an actress. They should not only they should not only be um, thanking those men and respecting them, they don't have any business dismissing them and, and calling them a bunch of racists and homophobes and all the rest of it every opportunity they get. You know, and if they had had the privilege of serving, uh, my my units looked like the... Some of the first gay people I met were in the army. Yeah. This, is, this is not... A, in clothes. But we have very different backgrounds. We have true diversity. Mm -hmm, that's right. And and, and, and and coming together, we we're the greatest fighting force in the history of mankind. Uh, the force that's done the most good, brought the most freedom, perpetuated the most justice of any organization. That's the United States military, and that's mm -hmm. made up of people. And it doesn't matter where your grandfather came from. Doesn't matter where you go on Sunday or Friday or Saturday, whenever you go. It's about being Americans and, and, and doing what Americans do. And to undercut that and to hate that, especially when you have no knowledge of that and no appreciation or understanding, I'm not sure whether I'm angry or just full of pity. At yeah, these I guess it's well said. That's well said. America uh, as a country, as a nation, has been able to do what Greece as a couldn't do because it wasn't a nation. And that's yeah. fused the, the Athenian and the Spartan together. Uh, if you look at something like Nazi Germany, that's all Spartan, no Athenian. It's just a just the brutality yep. of, of mindless, they're not even soldiers, they're just they're automatons. But even yes. in World War II, American soldiers had such decency, they came into the war with such decency from having come from such a decent place, that they not only were able to be kind to the people in the countries, but they had initiative and they were willing to take risks because they weren't going to be executed if they made a mistake. And that's why the U.S. Army was so unbelievably flexible and fast and Patton's cutting across Germany and, and he's He's going past towns. He says, Ike, I want to take this town. Ike radios back. Uh, George, you, you don't have time to take that town. George radios back. I, I took the town. Ike, you want me to give it back to them? You know, that, that kind of thing is, is, um, is, is what makes America so, so effective and so kind at the same time. I, and that's absolutely true. And I've been on both. Uh, uh, I've been in, in, in combat zones and I've been on relief missions. And I, I, I've seen how wonderful American troops would be. In Kosovo, for instance, we had a problem. Our post office was getting overwhelmed by packages. And we looked into it, and it turns out the troops were calling back home to their families, their churches, their schools, and having them send supplies over so they could go out on patrol and give these Kosovar schools who had nothing uh, supplies, books, pencils, notebooks. Uh, and, 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 you know, our, our poor little post office is getting overwhelmed with these boxes. And that says a lot about our troops. It says a lot about the American people. And it's all good. 
It is good. I remember when the Iraq war started, there were, uh, I was part of a, a drive to get together uh, hundreds of um, soccer balls and, and, and uh, jerseys and frisbees and send it to Iraqi kids and, and they could play with them. And that's the kind of people we are. And to hear people in Hollywood and the media say that we're Nazis is ah. not only a disgrace to them, but it's a disgrace to the people who are actually killed by those brutes. Kurt, we yes. could do this all day and the next day and the day after that. I'm having so much fun, but we got to go to a we break should. and we're going to come. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll grab a beer. We'll, we'll, we'll st- sit far away from the rest of these idiots and losers. And we'll, we'll, we'll have everything figured out in about 10 or 15 minutes. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to see you again, pal. Uh, when we come you. back, we're going to be talking with um, Frank Wynn about uh, guns and things related to guns. He's in the right place. God only knows here on NRA TV. I'm Bill Whittle from BillWhittle.com, sitting in for Coley and Noir. And this is CN Live. We'll see you right after the break. <laughs> 